Good afternoon, everyone. This is Professor Maloney again, and, and now, I was going to say today, but this is the same day as the video I recorded this morning, uh, doing Microsoft Access training at, this, uh, at the MyLab IT site. Uh, this morning's video ended up only being like 44 minutes, I think, which was, in my humble opinion, pretty darn phenomenal. I, I, was, I, I, I moved faster. Um, so today, well, I, sorry, now today, now at this time, I'm going to try to do chapters four, five, and six. Remember that Access has six chapters. That's one big difference between it and um, uh, Word and Excel, which had four. But the four were five, six, chapters five, six, seven, and eight, where here they're one through six. And then PowerPoint, I think it's going to be three through six. But in any event, um, so I've done three chapters, and I'm going to try to do chapters four, five, and six. If I can't do them in less than an hour, ideally in like 45 or so minutes, I may just stop and then add a, a third video if need be. But your exam on access is one week from today, and today is Wednesday, March the 30th. So one week from today is your exam uh, at the MyLab IT site. I'll be making that exam this upcoming weekend. Um, there are no projects in access for you. So in, in that regard, you, you know, you have more time, a lot more time to do the training. But of course, again, you have more work in the training. All right. So anyway, let me stop um, showing myself and get over and share my screen and go to my lab IT. As always, I shall first verify. So I am recording. I am. I am sharing. I am. My volume is up high. It is. It's here, and I'm not sharing my screen on me, but I am sharing my screen. All right, so go over here to start here for students. Okay. All right. So in my course materials, in my, I think just course materials, right? It's students. I know I say that every time. Yeah, I'm in student view. So Microsoft Access. So here we should see the scores that I got from my earlier ones, the ones from chapter one, two, and three. And remember, though, I mean, I did get them right. Uh, I only did, you know, I try to do always 35 to 40 percent, somewhere in there, maybe a little more, but no more than 50 percent for sure. And um, so these scores are 100. It's just what I did. So now I'm going to go to chapter four, okay, and get this thing here going. Excuse me. So, all right, now, um, so I'm in chapter four, so that's 4.1.1. All right, so create a form using the form tool based on the customer's table, okay? So first thing is to, so they've already single clicked on customer's table, so it's set. So to create a form, to create anything that with the word create, you click create. Now they want me to create a form using the form tool. So all these are forms here. The one that's just one word form, that's the, the form tool when they say that. So you click that. So now we have the form up and it was based on customers. All right. So change the width of the customer ID field. So here's the customer ID label right here. This is customer ID field, meaning text box. And they want it to be a half of the current size. So it's close to the end of the comments, comments, com comments. All right, so comments ends right here. So if I, so if I more or less go up, that's uh, about where these two little squares are in this subform sub report. So that's where I want to go. All right, so I want to click on here and drag and let release it on those two squares above, which is about right there. Okay, all right, so that part is done. Oh, wait, wait. they said customer ID. I think actually the way forms work, because again, it's been a while, even though I, I work on them all the time, but see, it's like in a table fashion. So if you click one, it then does them all. Okay. So I think that's right. But if not, they'll obviously bark at me and then I'll, I'll try to fix it. Okay. So let's see. I did that. Change the title of the form to customer information. So the title always comes up based on what the table was, if that's what it was based on. So I double click it. And they want customer, not customers. The cursor's to the right of S, so I'll delete the S, hit a space bar, and type information. 
customer information and press enter. Okay, so that is done. <clears throat> that part of the step is done. All right, now we're going to create a split form. So I guess they're going to just have us show quickly how to make some forms, and then they'll, I'm sure, have us do some hard stuff after a while. All right, so now again on the customer's table, uh, based on the customer's table, they want to make us um, have us make a split form. So again, create. Okay, so this is form, form design, blank form, none of those. Form wizard, not that. Navigation, not that. So it's in the more forms, and they want split, split form. So this one, okay. So now we have the split form. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, so change the title to customers split view. So double click. Now this time they want customers. So I go to the end, hit the space bar, put a dash, split, split view with a capital S and a capital V, press enter. Now, in this case, we're doing something else though, or the, I didn't see that that was a mistake. They accepted that, so it's not a mistake. I pressed enter, so this part. So create a multiple items form based on the products table. So they didn't say to save this, so I'm just gonna click now products, the table, products and now create a multiple items form so create uh let's see i think that was also in more forms yeah multiple items form right here okay yeah it did take that so the other one is still there okay and then products is just next to it so maybe they'll have me do something with the other one after a while all right uh, la, 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 la. Create a multiple items order, yeah, yeah, yeah. Change the title to products, multiple items. So again, they just want us to play with the, the title. So products, space, multiple items, capital M, capital I, press enter, the form will save and close. Hmm. Okay, I guess so. Create a form now using, wow, the form tool based on the orders table. All right, so this is the third or fourth one already. So click on orders, because that's what it's based on. All right, now create, and they want the form tool again. That's the first one. Let's done that. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. In the layout view, click the border off the sub form. All right, the sub form is this thing here. Click the border of it to select it. Okay, they want to delete. So this thing here, we want to get rid of. Okay, you see how, like if I click up here, that's piece of this form, piece of this form. But if I click up here, maybe it's the whole. No, it's everything, everything. Here, ah. Ah. okay, anyway, okay, this one is still selected, make sure, yeah. All right, so just single click it and delete, all right, so it's done. All right, create a navigation form with the horizontal tabs layer. The, the navigation forms are cool, and, and they're not based on a table. You might say, how come they didn't select anything? A navigation form, you can actually have a form just for tables and have all them tables be accessible from buttons but unlike a user interface form okay or they can put forms on it or queries or reports or all, all of them so you can do a lot with navigation forms all right but anyway so create a navigation form with the horizontal tabs so create and that's these that say navigation it's still under forms horizontal tabs two horizontal tabs horizontal tabs horizontal all right just horizontal tabs this one okay so this form is a navigation form it just again allows us to go somewhere else from within the form so they want us to now drag the customer information form so we're going to put this form into into the add new tab All right so basically i'm just going to drag this thing here and release it on top of add new maybe not customer information form this is customer information Okay, maybe I missed it. Anyway, so customer information form is there, and then another add new comes up. And now they want me to drag then the orders form. So orders, click, drag, put it into add new, and it's there. So that's so that's the first whatever done. Now there's only eight. So if I do three, then that's 37.5% again. So that, but I'm only on number two yet. All right, verifying the customer information form customer information form, right? That's this thing. And then the customer's table, that's this thing.
customer information form and customer information statement or customer statement. Okay, so verify that the sixth record is Lugo. All right, so in the form to find out if the sixth record is Lugo, I have to go through the records. So I'll just tab and tab. I said the sixth record. So when I come to, I'm on four, five, and six. So is it Lugo? It is Lugo Computer Sales. Okay. So, but it said verifying the customer information form and then the table. So I verified that. So now then the table, Lugo Customer Computer Sales, six. In this case, you know, they're just, oh, wait, sorry, the table. Wait a minute. What's going on? Oh, yeah, because here they're, they're here, Lugo. Obviously, I can just count from one through six down that way. Okay. So. Uh, the sixth one, one, two, three, four, five, six is Lugo Computer Sales. Fine. All right. Then in the customer information form again. So back to the form, change the contact from Adam Sanchez. Okay. So Adam Sanchez, make that Lucas Duda. Lucas Duda, capital L, capital D. Lucas Duda, D U D A. Advance to the next record to save the change. So if I just click a record button down here, okay, so that change is it's still there. Okay, there's still more instructions. So we're on, that's fine. So now switch to the customer's table, the customer's table, and verify the contact change in the table as well. Um, shoot. Uh, it must have changed, otherwise it wouldn't have went through. But obviously they want oh, right here actually Lucas Computers, the Lugo Computer Sales, and Lucas Duda is now the contact. Okay. All right. I demonstrated this, by the way, also in that lengthy one hour and 55 minute video I did, where I put a change in a form. I added a new record in a form and I showed you then that it was in the table. All right. Uh, in the bottom portion of the split form, select Lugo. So this table of uh, this record. In the top portion, okay, so now it's Lugo Computer Sales. Change the customer's email address to service at Lugo Comp. Service to correct. Okay, so they got service. So service, delete, delete. Let me make sure it all. So change it to service at lugocomputer.net. And they're saying to correct the mistyped information. So that was mistyped before, so we fixed it. Enter. <clears throat> okay, so that's number two. So now this one will get me to 37.5. So this will be the last one for chapter four. All right. All right. Reduce the height in the field so they are only as tall as they need to be using cell P0001. So P0001, reduce the height. So make the height less. Right here, you click, uh, you know, until you, so you just feel around, around the border. And then when you get the uh, two heads thing, one on top, one on bottom, you obviously drag up. You want to make it smaller. I mean, I can go real small like that, but I would, because like the G, there's a G over there that would not then get it. I just, you know, about like that should be safe. Okay. So that then changed all the records to that height. All right. Now let's see. Wait. Okay. I did that. Okay, now delete the cost and mark up percent columns. So now they want me to delete something, okay? So to delete columns, you have the values, like these are the text boxes, but I haven't deleted the, uh, what do you call the label? So if I want the label and all those, um, I'll, I'll just see what will happen. But anyway, so you, to delete a column, you have to be in the text field. So I have to be in this text field. Normally, the top one selects everything for you. Actually, I guess they all do. Anyway, so this one, and they're all selected. So they want me to delete it. So I have to go into, let's see, let's see, range, no format, no, range. Oh, select the column. Okay, select the column, because I have to tell them that I want to do something. So select the column. And when I did cost, okay, the label was also. So now it's all selected, so I can then delete it. And I'll just delete with my delete on my keyboard. So delete, done. All right, so I deleted cost, and then also mark up percent in that order. So I did the cost, and now here again, I'll click in the first field. They're all selected except for the label. 
I'm still in the range, so I'll just click select column, and then I'll verify that markup percent gets selected. It did, and then just delete with my delete key again. All right. Change the, val uh, the label for refrigeration, so that's here. Refrigeration needed to just refridge. So double click to get into that field. The end, and delete, 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 delete. And now it's refridge, R-E-F-R-I-G, R-E-F-R-I-G. The customer information form will open automatically. Um, let me enter. Okay, so now it's opened automatically. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now in the customer information form, change the shape, fill color, uh, customer ID field. So again, this is the customer ID field, that's customer ID label. So they want the field change to uh, blue accent one, lighter 60%, fifth column, third row under theme, colors. So that is a format property. So let's go to format. Fifth column, third row under theme, colors. It's a shape fill. fill. Okay, so this one here, and then in theme colors, fifth column. So column one going down, column two, column three, column four. This is column five. And third row, so that's row one, this is row two, this is row three, hover, blue accent one, lighter 60%. And now it changed that fill color, okay, for that cell. All right, change the font to the customer name. So here's customer name, change the font to 16. So of course that's just up in the font group. Uh, I'll just do it by uh, the drop down and clicking 16. All right, <clears throat> now add the home page field below the email address in the customer information form. Okay, so this is a customer information form. And like what I said, I think when I showed it, one of the first questions, maybe 4.1.1 or 4.1.2, I said that um, uh, they had a, remember they were already clicked on, on customers when they made the form, okay? But that doesn't mean they took all the fields. So what they're saying is they want me to add the home page field below the email address. So you see there's customer ID, customer name, contact, email address, but then it's address one, address two, city, et cetera. We don't have home page, We're not home page. I don't have that. So because this was made on the customer's table, the customer's table, I can probably just open this to view and see that other field and then just figure out what we're gonna do. No, it said, wait. Okay, no, I can't do it that way. Let's see if I can. No, it's not gonna. Okay, I can't go into that. I guess because I don't know. Oh, because they're not wanting to. Okay. So anyway, for sure there are more fields. So we have to figure out from our form layout where our fields are going to be. This is format, so format won't have fields. It's probably going to be design, but we'll try this one. Fields position move move. No, we want to. Anyway, you have to say field, select, select, design, controls, add existing fields. Okay, so add existing fields. Okay, so here we have customer ID, customer name, contact, email address, home page, address one, address two. See, so they're there, then city, state, zip, city, state, zip, then phone, fax, phone, fax. Um, service start credit rating and sales rep. Okay, so if they want me to take the home page, home page below the email. So you click on home page and drag, and wherever wherever you are tells you where it's going to be. Like right now, you see about a a little bit less than a one inch wide horizontal line that's reddish, pinkish, orangish. Um, in the email address. So that's not where they want. They said below. So now if I go, that's below. But if I go here, now it's on that next one. See, it's, you see it now in the address one. So I want it where more or less that bar is right there. So I'm going to release there. And now home page is there. But it didn't do anything. Where's the home page? Add the home field. These should be separate steps so we know if it worked. But if, I mean, it's there. Anyway, all right, so click the revenue query. So here's a, they only have one query, it's called revenue. Click the revenue query, query, 
and create a new form using the form tool. So we're creating another new form, a form based on a query, which is kind of unusual, actually. We never do that. But anyway, create. So based on revenue, a form tool. The one, form tool is the one called form. It's still all there. Oh, but, but revenue is up here. OK, so that is there. Let's see. Add that. Click the revenue. Create a form. Remove the layout. Remove the layout. All right, so to remove the layout, we have to be in what they call design view. We can see design view over here. OK, so we want design view. So now this is design view. And they want us to remove the layout from the form. So this is the form. So the layout is what is being applied to all these controls. But to remove that, we have to, which ones do we want to remove it from? So we want to remove it from, like we click here in revenue. We have to hold down our control. We want to take all these labels away. So keep your control, uh, control button pushed down and click all these. Actually, let me see if I can just do it with shift. Let me just start over here. So there, and I'll do shift down to revenue here. No, I thought maybe to select them all because we're going to need to get rid of the labels and the text field. So here, all right, so I'll just hold control, 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 click. No, control and click for each one, okay? Control, click, 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 and control, click. So I've selected all of these. Um, the records, by the way, are detailed. The form header has nothing to do with the layout, okay? So this thing here is okay, but this is what I have to get rid of. I'm not really getting rid of, but let's see. I'll figure something. All right, so remove the layout. So now I selected these fields. So now, again, I have to go into probably design. And there, I'm looking for basically a um, remove layout. So maybe it's actually a range. Yeah, remove layout. Okay, so click remove layout, and that's done. So that is now four of eight, which means I did three of eight. Um, I'll just do one more, but I don't really, actually, I've already been, this is only four. No, I, I got to move on. Otherwise, I'm not going to finish this. Okay, so that's 37.5%. So I'll click my submit. Should be anyway. Meaning three eights. Okay, so um, where am I? That was four. 37.5 is three eights. One thing I can remember is my math. All right, chapter five. Simulation. All right, with the animals table open in design view. So this is tables, it's animals, it's design view. Can you see field names, data types, and properties? Okay, uh, excuse me, set the animal name field as required. So go to animal name, click the field. Double check if this is correct. I think this happened in the earlier one. Anyway, if you get a message like that, it's basically saying because they don't like how the spelling is and, and no spaces or whatever. So just say ignore all. Um, but anyway, so we want to be in the animal name field. So then click animal name field. And we want the required property is true, which again, I did in the database build that I did with you uh, for you guys. So required, I just double click it to flip it to no, or you can just click it and do the down arrow. But I'll just double click, boom, and now it's yes. Okay, so now in design, you set the default value for the animal type to cat. So animal type, okay, same thing. Uh, they want me to double check it because they don't like the spelling, but I'll just say ignore all. And then you got to click it again, it looks like to change it. Um, so they want a default value. Remember I talked about default values uh, for cities. You know, I said also it might be, uh, if it's a true false field, you might want to make the default no or, or false, depending on how, you know, you set the data, uh, yeah, the database up. Anyway, default value. So you click over here on the default value, type C-A-T with a capital C, and they said enter. So click enter. All right, save the changes. Data integrity rules have been changed. So say yes. Switch to data sheet view. Data sheet view is this one. 
There are 39 records. Add a new record with the gen with a gender of female. Leave other fields blank. So when they say new record and it's in a table, you have to go to the end of the list to add it. Okay, I can go down to the end, but again, I can just click this. The last one says new blank record. Okay, so I'll click that one, and now that's where I am. They want me to add a record with a gender of female and leave the other fields blank. So here's gender. So I'm going to come over here and you no, notice default or the, the cat that was the default member. Like again, I mentioned for Homestead as a city. Oh, I, I did the other one as a zip code, 33030. I, I said, if you're doing a lot of stuff in Homestead, that might be a good default zip code. Anyway, here they want me to type female. Female. Leave the other fields blank. Press tab until you get an error. So tab, tab, tab. And I demonstrated this actually too, where I put something in wrong and it would then. Uh, make you uh, give you the message saying you got to put in something. Yeah, okay, there. You must enter a value in the animals.animal name field. Exactly what I showed you guys. So animals.animal name. So I got to go back over here to the beginning where animal name is. Okay, so that's this was the one cat and female. So right here, they want me to type the name Pepper. Pepper. Click another record to save the record. So just click, in other words, anywhere the same. So now that's saved. Okay, so that question is done. And this one is nine. So three out of nine is going to be 33%. Four out of nine is way in the 40s. So I'll do, do either three or four. All right. Um, add a validation rule of less than equal 50. So validation rules for the adoption fee. So go to adoption fee. Yeah, they again, see, they think it should be adoption space fee, but remember in databases we don't do that. But I've never gotten messages like this from Access. So I think it must be in their virtual machine or something. I'm not positive, but either way, I'm going to click ignore all. And when you click ignore all, though, it doesn't give you everything. So you got to click it again, and now it shows. So adoption fee, they want me to put a validation rule. I mentioned what validation rules are to you um, in our, in the, the lengthy video I did, that one hour, 55 minute again. So less than equal 50 is what they want as a validation rule. So if this amount of money is, is 51, well, really 50.01 technically or higher, it'll then fail the validation rule. And they want me to then put a, oh, wait, not default value, silly. Validation rule. So less than equal 50, right? Less than equal 50. And then for text, they want us to say the maximum, the maximum adoption fee is dollar fifty period. Please double, they put a check, uh, what do you call it? double dash check, check the adoption fee. And it looks like there's a period because it looks like it's in blue. So the maximum adoption fee is $50, but with just dollar five zero and then a period space, please, capital P, double dash check the adoption fee. I think they did that part to make us make, make a mistake. Anyway, all right, so switch to data sheet view, saving the changes. So data sheet view is just click here. Or you can also right click, by the way. Data integrity rules have been changed because we adjust it what was here it was nothing and now it's less than 50. okay so now let's see change the adoption fee value for the first record to 51. so here's the first record so i'm going to tab until i get to it's called adoption fee so tab tab oh it's actually here i can see it all right adoption fee change it to 51. I'm gonna, I guess I'll get rid of the dollar sign because it's formatted as currency, so we'll put that in anyway. And then click OK. So I'll enter, I think. OK. So the maximum adoption fee is, oh, OK, yeah. So here it's because it's higher. So they just wanted us to see. And again, I demonstrated that in class too. All right. So click OK when that's uh, displayed, change the value to 20. So 20 and tab. And that's a OK. Question complete. So that one is now, that's, we're on three of nine. Okay, good. So we're in good shape again. All right. Add a phone number input mask. These are really cool and easy. So they want to the owner phone field. So remember, we're in design view. 
And I talked about these things. I, I demonstrated many of them. But anyway, owner, phone. So we go to that field. Again, they're we got to say ignore all. I bet if I was on my computer doing it, or I mean, I am on my computer, but if I'm building the database and I typed it that way, I wouldn't get that message. I think it has something to do with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the um, my lab IT site, but who knows? Anyway, so I'm in owner phone, and you got to then click it twice to get the fields of the values. All right, let's see. Um, input mask for the owner phone. So input mask is this third choice, and this one I didn't demonstrate, but if you click the three dots, there are some really cool input masks. You know, social security, zip code extension, passwords, long time, medium time, whatever. But they only want us to do it for phone number. So they're saying, accept all default, all default options, except change the symbol option to with the symbols in the mask. Okay, so phone number, we just say next. Change the input mask with the symbols in the mask. If you wanna change it, no. So next. How do you want to store the data? To accept, change the symbol option to with the symbols in the mask. So they want us to include this, these symbols, instead of storing it this way. See, in other words, you can show it in the data sheet view this way, but still store it in the database this way. Okay, I don't know why they have a different value thing here though. In other words, it would be stored at 655, Three three seven zero seven seven six with no dashes, no spaces, and no closing and opening parentheses. But they said with the symbol. So then next, um, and then we just okay finish because that's all we do. They said. Now switch to data sheet view, saving the changes when prompted. So again, this way, this time I'll right click on here and see data sheet view is a choice. You must first save it. Sure, we want to save it. Change the first owner's phone number to like just numbers. So I gotta again go to phone number. So I'll tab, 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 tab. All right. So that owner phone, they want me to actually they want me to change the number of period. So 351. And see how it's already now got that as the area code. And then 617, 617, and it's got the dash mark there. And then 2278. And then press tab. Okay, question complete. So that means I've done three. So this one will put us into the 40, so I'll do this one too. All right, so change the animal type field to look up wizard. All right, so here, animal type. Okay, now we're on animal type down here. Hey, that one didn't bark at us. Oh, I think I said ignore all. I think I already clicked on this one before, but in a different one, and I guess it did remember it. Uh, except all, so... Change the animal type field to look up. All right, so animal type is short text. But in the data types, I mentioned that there's a lot of other data types. I actually said there's not too many, but there's quite a few. Lookup wizard is one where we actually allow the users to only pick values based on what we put in this lookup wizard. So in this case, let's see what they want. Change the animal type field to lookup wizard. I just did that, or I'm doing it. Uh, get the values from the types of animals table. So from another table, yes, and then next. Which table? Animals or types of animals? It says from the types of animals. So types, oh, let's see down there. So types of animals, sorting by animal type. That's not a sort, that's just the view. So go next, and now we have to have a sort. No, first we have to select the field. We only have one field, animal type, so we'll select it. And we still haven't come to a sort. Okay, here's our sort. And we only have one field. What do you think we're going to sort it by? Uh, I think animal type. Well, I guess it could have been none. Animal type, accept all other defaults. So then just click next, accept that. So you click next, accept the name, and accept it. Save the table. So they didn't say to change it. So finish. And whatever. Yep. Yes. And some data may be lost because we changed that value. All right. Switch to data sheet view. So we can click on it again, or let's just right click over here another time to get used to doing it that way too. All right, so we have 40 records. Add a new record to the end of the table, animals table, type Marco in the animal name field, and press tab. So again, new record is this one here. I'm not gonna tab this thing 40 times to hit it, so this is new record. Okay. All right, now 
I don't have to add a value. These are new, which means it's auto number, but they didn't tell me to anyway, but that's why we're, you see the word new. They said, just add the name. So this is animal name right here. Okay. So here we want Marco. Marco. And then press tab. Okay. In the animal type field. So here's the animal type field. Okay. Animal type. Um, select bird. So B I. See now, now when I type B I, bird's coming up because I did this with a lookup wizard from the type of animals, types of animals table. And one of the types is bird. One is a cat, obviously. One is a dog. So if you type B I, there's nothing else with B. Or if I type B, that was probably when bird popped up. But anyway, so that's fine. So select bird and then press enter, and then everything else will auto complete. So rent, uh, enter, done. All right, so that is now four. So that's 44.44% uh, the way my mathematical mind goes, because nine goes into 100, 11 point 11, 11, 11, 11, you know, re repeating ones. So four times 11 is 44, and then you get the same repeatings, the one, 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 but times four, so it's four, 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 four. Anyway, all right. So I'm saying that's enough, so submit. Okay, yes, that's okay. Um, so now we should have a score on that one. That should be what I just said, 40, wait, oh, sorry, better get a four. Yeah, 44.44, and now the last one is chapter six, nothing after that. So six, simulation training. And so far, I've been on here about 37 or 38 minutes. So it'll be longer than this morning. But if I can make this less than 50 minutes, which it looks like I might be able to, that's great. Uh, create a backup copy of the open database. So this is a database that's open. Create a backup copy using the default file name. So file, obviously, save as. Okay. And they want this, though, a backup copy. So, see, here is backup. So you're not saving it, it's just save database as, but it's an advanced type, backup database. Basically, this is being done so you're protecting your data. So we have a backup database. Oh, and then save as. Okay, save as with the default file name. So I don't have to even read it to you. It just says save it with the default file name, save. All right, question one is done. And here there's 10. So again, three would be 30, four would be 40, so I'll do four. Okay, let's see. Begin to create a query in design view. So begin to create. So cr create a query in design view, query design. Okay. Begin to add the inventory pattern and manufacturer tables in that order. So inventory. So double click inventory. Boom, boom. It's over there. Double click pattern. Boom, boom. It's over there. Double click manufacturer, boom, boom, it's over there. And then close, because that's all we want, inventory, pattern, and manufacturer, so close. All right, now we want to add some fields. And again, I demonstrated this in my, um, in my lengthy one hour, 54, 55 minute um, access overview. All right, so from the inventory list, which is this one, add SKU on hand quantity, so SKU, means add it down here. You can click and drag. You can actually even click it from down here. Uh, but I just double click. Boom, boom, and it's there. Boom. And it even tells you it's from the inventory table. All right, that's skew. Then on hand quantity. On hand quantity. Boom, boom. It goes automatically to the next available field. Whatever you double click on, go uh, next available column. All right, on hand. And then retail. Retail. Boom, boom. Done. Now from the pattern table, which is the middle one, Add the manufacturer ID to the fourth column. Well, I don't need to worry about which one because it's going to go here anyway. So manufacturer ID, boom, boom, there it is. And now from the manufacturer table, add the alias field. So alias, boom, boom, and it's there. Okay. So now add the criteria for the manufacturer ID. Remember, criteria, which I also demonstrated in my lengthy MS Access over, Overview video. So if you want to do a criteria, you base it on whichever column you want, or you create a new column. So they want me to do it in manufacturer ID. So here's manufacturer ID. Uh, ignore all again. Uh, go to criteria, okay, 
and type 801190. 801190. 801190. Press enter. Okay. Now, okay, so this I did not do in my demonstration, but th this is where access gets cool. And you guys are in the advanced class, so this is good to get. So what they're going to want us to do now is make this query an update. So from query design, when you add your query elements like this is all done here, I can then use one of these other query types. And they want me to make it a update query. Update generally means you want to then make something change. And normally, you're wanting to charge people more money. OK? So change the query to update, and then modify the query so that the amount in the retail field is increased by 5%. So retail field, we're going to go to criteria. Oh, update to, sorry, because update to in this one makes sense. Because um, we're updating whatever the retail value is. It's too bad they didn't let us see the retail value first. But anyway, um, we're going to multiply it by itself and then times point, um, 1.05 to get 5% more. So update. So the amount of that is increased by that when the query is run. Okay, so I'm going to do here is this field name. So it's retail. Okay, so I'm going to do left bracket, retail, right bracket. Because I want them to know that this is a field, and this is the field, retail, and I want to multiply it times 1.05, okay? So left bracket, the word retail times, which is asterisk, right bracket, you have to put the bracket around the field name, okay? And then the asterisk means multiplication. I don't want to say 5% because then you're only going to be charging 5%. Because what retail means here is, let's say the price is $100, okay? If I multiply it by 5%, that's $5. So you got to multiply it by itself. So 100 times, you know, you want the 100 and then 5% more. So 100 times 1.05 is 100 times 1 is 100. 100 times 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05 is 5. 100 plus 5 is 105. So that's what we're doing. All right, and then press enter. Cool. Yeah, that's a good query. Very, very fancy. All right, view the SPOD China price update query in data sheet view. So SPOD China, that's where we are. Okay, uh, yeah, I got to finish though. See, I now I talked a bit too much the last few minutes. Uh, all right, here we want to do an update query. Oh, it is an update query. View that in the data sheet view. Okay, so let's just go to data sheet view. So I'll just right click here and do data sheet view. Okay, so here's data sheet view. So, um, all right, they're saying a price is going to increase to $21. So we have to pay attention, and obviously that would be the $20. Bit, okay, so $20, they're going to make that go up by, uh, let's see, 10% would be $2. Sure, not $2, right? But $5, uh, $1, sorry, means 5%. So 10% is $2, so half of that is $1. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. All right, so $20 uh, displayed in design view. Okay, so that I did. <coughs> oh, sorry, I haven't done it in design view. So right click here, design view. Okay, so, oh, that's the one I just did. Yeah, or parts of what I just did. Okay, so retail, retail, whatever. So what Mean, what this means is when I run the query is when this kicks in, and now it's going to go up to $21. So run it, and it says you're going to update four rows, because there were four rows, not just one. Update, fine. And then it says switch to data sheet view and verify that the first record is now $21. So this time I'll go to data sheet view this way, and there's $21, okay? Now just to let you know, even though I, I left that one now, if I would have went back in and run it again, it would update it by five more percent. So it'd be 21 times 1.05, which means it'd be 22 something. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I got it. Yeah. So this is number four. Actually, this is the last one I'm going to do anyway. Okay. Open the employees table and data sheet view and observe that the table contains 19 records. So open the employees table and data sheet view. So employees, this time I'll do it this way. and Wait, data sheet view, sorry. Just double click it to, to go to data sheet view. All right, close the employees table. So we want to see there's 19 records, 19 records, okay? 19 records, close it. All right, create an append query in design view. So an append query adds records to an existing table, okay? 
All right, create an append query and design view using the new employees. Okay, so they have an employees table, but they also have a new employees table. They're going to add new employees to employee. That's what we've done. I've done this a million oh, this one. I've done this a million times in my life. Well, probably 50 or 100 anyway in my earlier database work uh, work fields. All right. So, so a single click on new employees because that's what they want the, the query based on, and it's a query design. All right. So create query design. All right. And you notice up here again, we're going to be able to do whatever, and we're going to be doing an append query. Anyway, I got yeah, an append query. But first, I got to do this. So. Uh, using the new employees I did. So set up the query so, that, so it's only new employees. So the table is new employees. Let's see, new employees. So then close it. All right, so now we have the table we want there. So it's query set records from that will be appended to the employees table. Okay. Simultaneously add. So I'm going to double click here. Boom, boom. Oh, okay. They want me to do the append first. So here's the append. Okay. Now they're saying, what do you want to append this to? They want the new employees will be appended to the employees. So new employees get added to employees. I think I said there were 19 records. I forget though now. Anyway, so append to the dropdown will have all the tables in the database. And they said to employees. Okay. So we're putting new employees to employees. Obviously the new employees had to have been based on employees so that the same fields are there. Uh, current database, yes, so say OK. So that's done. But again, this should be a separate step because otherwise it's confusing. So simultaneously add all the fields from the new employees table to the query design grid in the existing order. So if I just double click this asterisk one, I don't think I showed you this before. It, show, it does all the fields. So boom, boom. Uh, they're not, OK, they're not letting us. So there's a lot of fields. So we had to double click. They said the existing order, double click, double click, double click, double click, double click. That's ridiculous. That, yeah, the asterisk is a select all. Boom, boom. All right, now run the query to append the table and click yes in the message box. So remember, I'm running it, and but when I run it, it's an append, okay? So it says you are about to append three rows. So that means three rows will be added to the other. And I believe it was 19, so it'll go to 22. Are you sure you want to append them? Yes. Now open the employees table in data sheet view. So again, we can right click here or we can just go to the view button here and data sheet view. You're about to append three rows. Yes. Okay. Um, open the, oh, you know what? I may have done that twice. I don't even know now. Anyway, open it in data sheet view is what they want. Ah, wait a minute. Run the query. Too. Oh, I didn't run the stupid query. Ah, yeah, run the query. Yes. Okay. Now open the employees table in data sheet view. So employees table in data sheet view, double click it. And they're not letting us see, but it's uh, there. It was 22 at the bottom. Technically, I did that three times. So if that was a real database, Instead of 22, it would be 25 and then 28. Unless, of course, the uh, primary keys wouldn't let those same records be going over again. And I didn't pay that. Actually, they didn't let us see what, what the fields were. So I'm not positive. But either way, uh, that's what, you know, they're very powerful queries. Okay, so I'm on 5 of 10. That means I stopped. So I'm going to stop. Oh, I got to submit. Wait, submit. And okay. All right. So, wow, I'm going to be so proud that I can end this. It's still long but not as long. So let's go to chapter four and verify that I did somewhere between 30 and 40. Chapter four training, 37.5. Okay. Chapter five, 44.4. Chapter six, 40. All right. So have a great day. I'll see you in class tonight. So let's stop our recording.